Bernie Madoff, currently serving a 150-year prison sentence after running the largest Ponzi scheme in history, is back in the spotlight. ABC is airing a new miniseries about his multi-billion dollar scandal. I'm joined now by Matthew Schwartz, a partner at law firm Roy Schiller and Flexner, and a former assistant U.S. attorney. And Matthew, it's great to see you. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So before we talk about this miniseries on ABC that's getting all this attention, why don't you walk us through your involvement with the Madoff case over the past several years? Sure. I, I, I spent um, a little bit less than 10 years as an assistant U.S. attorney in Manhattan. Um, and for the last five or so years of my tenure, I was one of the prosecutors, along with a big team from the FBI and the IRS and the SEC and the Department of Labor and other agencies, that was investigating Bernard Madoff Investment Securities. Even though uh, Bernie Madoff had been arrested back in 2008 and pled guilty very promptly, uh, it was obvious that there was uh, a larger investigation to be had and that other people were responsible. And ultimately, we succeeded in convicting 15 different people, including Bernie Madoff, and uh, recovering between the efforts of the government and the court-appointed trustee about $15 billion so far. So reports suggest those figures, $15 billion, $11 billion. What can you tell us about those details in terms of the process of getting that money back? Well, there, there's a court-appointed trustee who is doing most of that work, Irvin Picard, um, and he and his law firm have recovered about $11 billion from various sources, some of that in conjunction with the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice, the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, has recovered an additional $4 billion that's being uh, distributed, all of it is being distributed to victims of Madoff's fraud. All right, now we should point out you joined this law firm last year along with two other Madoff prosecutor, prosecutors, Randall Jackson and John Zack, along with another assistant U.S. attorney, Peter Skinner. All four of you were at the Southern District in New York. Let's talk about that miniseries on ABC. You watched it. What did you think? Was it accurate? Uh, parts of it were accurate. Parts of it were very accurate. I mean, they, they obviously had to... Um, create narrative and not tell the entire story to, to fit a 40-year fraud into a four-hour miniseries. Right. You know, uh, John and Randall, who you mentioned, and I tried a case for six months against five people who worked for Bernie Madoff. And even in a six-month trial, we only scratched the surface of this 40-year fraud. Um, so, you know, obviously they took artistic license, but a lot of the details were shockingly accurate. Um, things that, that may even seem outlandish, like um, the employees printing out records and then to make them look like they were 10 years old, tossing them around like footballs and, and um, ruffling them. And in the show, they put it in a microwave. Microwave. In, in reality, they put it in a refrigerator to, um, so that it wasn't hot off the presses. And they also were serving donuts when the SEC investigators were in their offices investigating. It was pretty incredible. What is being done since the Bernie Madoff scandal came to light back in 2008, 2009, to prevent these types of Ponzi schemes? Now, Ponzi schemes are a kind of fraud that's been around since Charles Ponzi, um, and they will continue to be around. You know, just uh, in the past few days, a $7 billion Chinese Ponzi scheme was revealed. Um, and it's, a, it's an extraordinarily difficult kind of fraud to stop. The regulators are much more vigilant, um, not that they weren't before, but they've uh, prioritized looking for this kind of fraud in routine regulatory examinations. And I think that things like uh, the revelation of the Madoff fraud have made people more attuned to Ponzi schemes generally. But the Madoff scheme went on for decades. I mean, someone missed it. A lot of people missed it. Uh, you know, a lot of people were lulled by a guy who seemed very credible. He was, as the show uh, depicted, the chairman of the NASDAQ. He had a reputable brokerage firm. Um, and he had high-profile clients, and he delivered consistent but not outlandish returns. His paperwork all looked immaculate. He fooled a lot of people. But at the end of the day, um, what was depicted is also true. He had winning, consistently winning returns over um, an almost unbroken streak of time over decades. And, you know, I think investors always need to be careful whenever anyone, first of all, if anyone ever promises returns, sure. that's not consistent with investing in the stock market. Um, and second of all, whenever there's no volatility in returns, that is suspicious. And, uh, you know, that, that was a feature of Madoff's Ponzi scheme that I think people have learned from. There are other things that uh, people have learned from, for example, 
uh, Madoff's financials were audited by a two-man outfit that mm. didn't do this kind of work. Certainly some red flags to be watching out for. Matthew Schwartz, thank you so much. Some great insight. Thanks so much for having me. I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.